everyone. Welcome to Faith Alive Fellowship. Wednesday night service. Amen. Are you guys pumped up? Yes. Woohoo! There we go. There we go. Go to Mark Barclay's church and he says, turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. You can do that right now. And everyone goes, woohoo! <laughs> I get a kick out of listening to that on the MP3s or whatever you got nowadays. Matthew 7. Lord, we just ask that you'd help me to teach your word tonight faithfully. Give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord, to teach your people and that we might glean some new things in, this, in our spiritual lives and in our natural lives in Jesus' name and help us to be successful and act wisely in our everyday life. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. So thank you to Pastor Tom Stella to let me preaching and teaching tonight. And uh, it should be a fun time. I got my family way over here, so I'll be swinging my head over here periodically. My wife's got her God Guns and Gains t-shirt on tonight, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, Amazon Prime, brother. Yeah, there you go. Got a lot of ground to cover tonight. Pastor wanted me to teach on seven things I learned from marriage. Been married since 2005. I think we're going to go at least another 50 or some odd years, early 90s. That's where our faith's at. We could go to 100, but you hit your 90s, you're like, do you really want to live to 100? I mean, what do you think, Beth? Do you want to go to 100? If, if Beth goes to 100, I'll go to 100. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Live, live as long as you can. Why not? Because you know, everybody needs your experience. They need to know what you've learned. People that have been through things, you know. So they don't get forgotten. So I wanted to say being married doesn't make us husbands. Husband just means master of a house. And having kids doesn't make you a father. But another good quote is, the best thing a father can do for his kids is to love their mother. Isn't that a good one? Amen. Amen. I didn't make that up. I stole that from a little plaque in, I think it's Grandma Miller's house or something. Miller. Warrior Poet Society, uh, if you ever look it up on YouTube, um, at home, be a poet, you know be a poet and didn't know it, amen? And then when you're out and about against your enemies, be a warrior then. And a lot of people, they swap it around for some odd reason, yeah. you know? And so you're supposed to be a lion and you're supposed to be a lamb at the same time, just like Jesus. So talking to them men here, amen? So we don't want to mix that up. We don't want to come home, be a tyrant, and then we're out and about with everyone else. We're all sweet and nice. That's ah, true. and then they get the little ting coming off of your, your tooth, you know? And then you go home and, you know, people just hiding in the corner, right? Why do I say that? Because it's a true story in many cases. You know, that's why a lot of, well, maybe a lot, not a lot in this case, but there's pastor's kids that, you know, didn't pan out too well because of, they didn't see the example at home, right? right. So master of your house, you know, it sounds kind of like, you know, what, master and slave? No, not master and slave. That's for HVAC units, you guys. Come on. Master of your house doesn't mean... You have the right to control others or control everything, right? right? Or to run around and do as thou wilt. That's the Satanists. Don't confuse that, you know? That's for them. That's what they do. We do as he wills, right? You deny yourself, you take up your cross and follow him, amen? amen. <clears throat> and we put the comforts and the needs of our family before ourselves. Amen. So even if it means sometimes taking a job that you kind of just hate, you know? You learn to love it anyways. You learn to love the people around you, the felons around you, amen. They need love too, you know. I could have been a felon if not for Jesus. I'd probably be buried in Fort Howard Memorial Park by now. So 2 Samuel 23, verse 3 to 4. I almost missed that one. I really like this one here. And uh, I'm not going to try to take too much time here, but 23, verse 3 and 4. For you guys, you bosses, uh, employers, just anybody who's running a business, you know. You're a leader and people look up to you. They, they see what we, what we do even when we don't realize they're watching. He that rules over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. Imagine if we had that in America. You know, at certain sundry times in the past, we did. We had our Abraham Lincolns, right? Yeah. People like him. They weren't perfect. Nobody said they were, but man, we've, we've, uh, we've had some good people. And he shall be as a light of the morning when the sun rises, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. 
That sounds like the total opposite of what we have right now, but praise God, we got <laughs> Stephanie Sochik stepping up. Put the hammer down on him. Amen. It starts in our communities, right? Yeah. Uh, another thing is a little tip. <clears throat> if your kids are allowed to constantly interrupt your husband and wife conversations, they're already on the road to rebellion. Don't let them do that. That'll help you. They're not allowed to do that because they're, in a way, they're not on your level, you know. They're people, and we're all created equal, but they have to learn respect. And they're not going to learn it that way, just getting whatever they want and interrupting. Number one out of the seven things that I've learned about marriage, I just entitled it today, Seven Things I Love About You. You ever watch the movie Ten Things I Hate About You? Don't watch it. Don't. (laughs) Sabella, don't watch it. That was my teenage years. But I just took a play off of the words on that. So seven things I love about you. Anyways, number one, the word, build your marriage and your friendship on it, at, in, in your marriage, of course, meditate on it, act on it together. Let's go to Matthew 7. I love Matthew 7, because in the times we're living in, this is your fail safe. You've got lots of scriptures that back you up on this, but this is a good one. Therefore, whosoever hears these things of mine and does them, I'll liken him to a wise man which built his house on a rock. You know, it's kind of funny is. You see sometimes sinners that have, seems like a pretty decent marriage, like they stay together. It's kind of rare nowadays, but it's been that way in the past. Mm -hmm. They probably did something that the Word taught them, Mm -hmm. or their parents taught them at some point. But uh, you can even have a successful business, you can have a successful marriage, and not even be a Christian, right? Because you're doing the principles in the Word of God, amen? But anyways, we have it so much better because we're Christians, right? But our divorce rate's not supposed to be the same as the sinners. So why is that? Just no discipline. No, no disciple type of living. Just people do as thou wilt. You know, that's for the Satanists. That's not for us guys. Do as thou wilt is for the, they get down on their knees, they cut their skin open, they do whatever they want to do, cry out to demons, help me, make me successful. That's the occultists. You don't have to be that way. You don't have to do as thou wilt. You could just get down on your knees, worship God, and be like, show me what I need to do today, Lord, because I know that I'm stupid. You know that I'm stupid. We're all very, very stupid without God, yeah. so show me how to do this thing right, because even my experience is not enough. I could be married for 300 years. It's not enough experience to do this thing today right. i got to inquire of God, right? The rain, well, it says, I liken him to a wise man which built his house on a rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew. So it's going to come regardless whether we like it or not. The COVID type of garbage will will come whether we like it or not. And it could be worse the next time it comes whether we like it or not. What does this verse say? Rain descends, floods come, winds blow, beat on our houses, but what does it do? It doesn't fall because it's founded on a rock. Amen? And that's the most important thing to realize. When you're a doer of the word of God, just keep, keep on standing. Amen? Keep on standing. Keep on praying in tongues. You're having a problem? You having an issue? Go find a little parcel of wood somewhere and go pray in tongues. Go find a basement. Go find somewhere. Everybody's got a secret place. We all know we got a secret place. Whether we want to use it or not, it's up to us. Psalm 127, verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. So I see that as just marry the right person. Do not do as thou wilt. Set your own will in the trash can because you're as stupid as a sinner is. We're all very, very stupid, brutish, dull, right? All of us, every single one of us, no matter how bright we we seem to be at times. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. And then when you find the right person, just keep on standing together, right? Don't be a flirt. No. Don't be a married flirt who just looks around and eyeballs women when they go by. How disgusting. It's disgusting. It's perverted. Oh, it's okay to look. Really. No, no, no. But I only have eyes for you. Is that just a farce? Did somebody just come up with a pipe dream or something? If Jesus got married, he'd be singing that song to his spouse, right? Amen. Uh, verse 11 of chapter 3, 1 Corinthians. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 
And then you could, you could just stay there for a moment. I'll, I'll read it to you. I don't want to burn out your Bibles today. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law, I like to say like Brother Hagin, this book of the law of love shall not depart out of our mouths, but we shall meditate. That means to talk to yourself in it. In the, I think it's the Rotherham Bible or something. Talk to yourself in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success and act wisely. Who wants to have a successful marriage? Amen. Whether you're married or not, you could be getting married at some point soon. Maybe. Maybe you want to be single. What's wrong with being single? There were single, single preachers in the Bible, right? Yeah, it's more peaceful. It's easier to, it's easier just to go, hey, me, what would you like to do today? Right. Sounds good. Yeah. You, know? you don't even have to check with the kids, right? Amen. So I say go to church together, stay on fire for Jesus together, grow in God together, and then your kids are going to follow you. Right. Just do that. Amen. Like Jocko Willingstein, just, just do that. You know, just, just do it. <laughs> so why did I name it this? I said, number one, seven things I love about you. Number one, what I love about my wife. She's become a word person, avid Bible reader. She uh, is a Bible teaching listener. I always hear Brother Hagen going off in the room. She's reading scriptures and working on building her day around it, and then she sends me scriptures too. And that's what you're supposed to be doing. If you're married, talk scriptures to each other. Amen. Don't say, oh, did you see what Brother so-and-so did? Oh, man. Let's just chew a hole through him right now. Let's have some fun, man. Like, that's not good. We're not supposed to be you know, complaining about people and stuff like that. Amen. Amen. Number two, unity. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. If you don't know where that is, Psalms, Proverbs, and I think Ecclesiastes is right after that. There you go. Chapter 4. I certainly don't know everything about what I'm talking about, but I'll just tell you what's worked for me, and then you can pick up whatever you want. And if you want to think about Taco Bell right now, that's your decision too. Although... <laughs> Taco Bell's been making smaller portions. And I don't think the quality has gone up either. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We don't, when we go out to eat, it's more of like a punishment. And I go, oh, I'll give her a break. Let's have a break and go to Olive Garden. She loves that Olive Garden, so I'll give her a break. But, you know, I like, I like eating at home because it, it tastes so good. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that's alone when he falls, for he has not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. How's that? Anyone ever notice that in the wintertime? Between the cycles of the furnace? Oh, it's kind of cold. And you cuddle up, you know? If two lie together, then they have heat. How can one be warm alone, right? You have to get like a dog or something there, a little heater, yeah. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. That's one of my favorites. Threefold cord is not easily broken. Amen. Um, I will say this, 1 Peter 3, 7. 1 Peter 3, 7 says, I'm going to go over and quote it exactly. Uh, let's see. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to your wife as under the weaker vessel. I think weaker in terms of just physical you know, because I, I see a lot of women that are way stronger than men nowadays. Uh -huh. they, they, it's just way stronger. It's not even not even the same ballpark. Mm -hmm. Reverend Brian's giving me the nod too. Yeah, <laughs> giving honor to the wife is under the weaker vessel, right? And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. How do we hinder our prayers? Just go home and you know, just be grumpy all the time. Right. Just just say stuff at like it, with, with with a certain way that you wouldn't do in public. Right. And what it does is, it's like a furnace condensate trap. If you jam that up, you know what happens? That furnace is down. It gives you an error code, it doesn't kick out heat. No pilot light, no heat. So that condensate trap's gotta get cleaned out, and if it's not cleaned out, guess what happens? So enough of that buildup, you know, of just acting a certain way, saying certain things that you should never say, and boom, you got no heat coming out of there. Not good, not good. So, and I like this in the Passion Translation. 1 Timothy 5, 4 says, Kindness begins at home. Everyone say it. Kindness begins at home. How about that? 
Not at the business. Not at the, not even at the church, yeah. right? Yeah. At your house. That's where we see who you really are, That's right? right? That's right. God sees it all, amen? Right. Matthew 19, we're going to Matthew 19. I probably have a record number of scriptures in here. I didn't even mean to, but it just, just so happened. 19, verse 5 to 6. I'll back it up a little bit. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? I said male and female. Did you hear that, internet land? And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, right? And they too shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Right? Amen. A true marriage where God has joined together man and woman causes that man and woman to become one flesh. Each spouse needs to cleave to each other and no one else. Not the yeah. friends, not the parents, not right. the kids. A lot of people are lean on their kids. Yeah. Don't do that. When your kids are going to leave, what are you going to That's do right. anymore? Yeah. You've got somebody in your house that you're like, oh, I don't even know you anymore. Right. Not good. So make sure, um, I'll get there in a little bit. Unity and agreement about what to do with money is very important. Don't go just running around signing up for new debts. No. Think about how we can... Um, increase our money, like in the parable of the, what was the parable of the talents? Mm -hmm. He didn't say go learn how to take out new debts. It's like, how are we going to increase this? And don't just save your money. You know, save money, oh, great. But Mike Murdoch would say it's better to know how to spend your money wisely so you can increase it. Right. You have to spend money to make it, right? Yeah. So I have a lot to learn along these lines. But you can use your faith together to pay off debts right. by faith. Yeah. And if you're the treasurer, I kind of recommend the dudes crunching the numbers. That's just my position on that. But make sure you're updating and you're not like got a little hidden stash over here or something. You know, it's supposed to be your money. Right. When you signed up and you said, you know, I take my vow here to, to death to us part. Mm -hmm. Your money is her money. Why are you hiding money? Why are spouses hiding money? You know? <laughs> so maybe you don't have that problem. Great. Moving right along. Uh, also, when and how to do romance, not allowing porn or like strange practices into the bedchamber. Right. Where did you learn that? Oh, from my other relationships. Time for you to wipe out your other memories and all of that garbage, you know? The old song, I Only Have Eyes for You, we mentioned, still applies today. Uh, I would say when you're one flesh together, kind of means that you're going to ex do extremely well together or extremely badly, you know? Because now you've got two people to do it together, right? Mm -hmm. So you become a two-person army. So it's like, it's like being a Navy SEAL out there, you know. You can't see in the back of your head, but if you've got somebody back-to-back -back with you, you've got 360-degree point of view, you know. So no wonder it hits them so hard when they, they lose a good comrade because, you know, it's like they've lost a part of themselves, you know. It's pretty hard. Prayer of agreement is probably my favorite thing about marriage, Matthew 18. I just have to take one page and flip it. Maybe you could just see it on your, on your page right now. Matthew 18, verse 19. Again, I say to you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them, my Father, which is in heaven. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So he's there with you, like he's already inside of you, right? He's already with you. Imagine that when you have two people together. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, that's all you need is a marriage, right? It's pretty powerful. It's pretty awesome. And so, amen. So it's really important. Take advantage of this in your house. Like, pray about everything. I don't care if it seems it's like simple and stupid. Pray about it. Amen. It's gotten to the point where me and my wife sometimes will go, oh, what should we do? What should we do about that? Um, you know, da, da, da. Why don't we just pray about it first and stop thinking about it? Admit that you're stupid. It's okay. We're all stupid. It happened when Adam did what he did. We all fell from grace, right? With him. You know, and Jesus raised us up so we could walk in his wisdom. Because his wisdom is the only thing worthwhile. Or we, or we walk in earthly wisdom and it looks kind of good for a little while and all of a sudden, face plant. You ever get the awesome face plant? This worked before. Why isn't it working now? You can take advan advantage of communion with each other and pray as a family. You could, like, sometimes what we do, for just for an example, you do what you want, but when we're driving, we'll go take rounds in the vehicle. Like, okay, I'm thankful to God for this. 
that's a form of like a really high form of prayer. We'll go around the vehicle and everybody's got to say what they're thankful to God for. And it has to be different than the last person. And we're constantly stealing each other's Thanksgiving. So we have to keep thinking of backups and backups, you know. So anyways, that's a good thing to do. So what do I love about Jennifer on the lines of unity? I would say she walks in unity with me. Yes, we have our moments, but we just repent, get back in unity. Amen. You want to do that as fast as possible, like a sprinter, not like a long marathon that's going all day, you know. She's a prayer person, takes things into prayer and deals with them in the spirit realm without being weird. So I know when she's going at it, I'm like, all right. And like Joseph C. goes, when I hear that, I go, I feel engaged. <laughs> I, I just got the biggest kick out of that. He was on a live call and he's like, ooh, I could just hear her praying up there right now. It was great. Number three, communication. James 1. James chapter 1. The Proverbs of the New Testament, right? It's yeah. awesome. I love James. Chapter 1, verse 19. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. The wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Okay, that's pretty loaded. Kind of speaks for itself. So listen to your spouse. Many arguments are just two people talking about two sides of the same coin, and they're both right. I was at the Healthy Way recently, and if they showed you a cylinder, you know, it, from, from one point it looked a certain way, and from another point it was a certain way, and two people could say, you know, it's this shape, it's this shape, and you're saying the same thing, but you're just so bent on, I have to be right. I have to be right. I have to be. You're both right. You're looking at the same coin. Well, if you could just step back and not need to be right all the time, you'd understand, okay, I get this. I get it, you know, it makes sense. But it takes secret place time. Because remember, we're all very stupid. <laughs> and when you admit that to yourself, knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. Yes. So what does strife do? It refuses to consider and have understanding for a different point of view. Remember, I have to be right. Men have a big problem with that. They're the pride balls. Instead of steroid balls, they're pride balls. I'm, I'm a man, hear me roar. Why is it then that by the end of the day, you're toast? You know what I mean? And you got you to gotta sleep at night. Jesus don't need to sleep. God doesn't need any rest at all. He doesn't slumber or sleep, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say disagreement becomes strife when you allow malice in your heart. It's, so it's okay to like have a different point of view and disagree on things. Yeah. Sometimes we, we don't understand that disagreement is not the same as strife at all. That's right. It's just, I just seeing this from a different yeah. point of view. Yes, very good. And we might just both be right. Yes, exactly. So take a step away and pray in tongues for a while. Okay. True hospitality is this, being able to consider where people are coming from because we all come from very different walks of life, different parents or lack of parents. Sure. How we speak to others and how their talents and gifts can be used best, you know? It's one of the things I learned from pastor, like when you're, when you're leading people to any degree, what are you gonna do? Sometimes you don't have a choice because you only have so many people, but once, you're, once you get more of a base of people, you can start putting them in the spots they fit into best, like somebody loves doing electronics or somebody loves doing music, whatever, you know? Sometimes, you know, you ever, you ever worked at a business where you just wore all the hats? All of them. Yeah. Yeah, we're yeah, there you go. Men are wired obviously different than women, so they have to explain things sometimes multiple times because remember, you guys, we're all pretty stupid. So we explain things in a stupid way, okay? So for a woman to understand, you might have to explain it a few times and vice versa. Like there's times where it's like she was saying something to me, I'm like, I don't understand what she's saying, but it seems like she's explaining it really well, but. I was like, okay, it's taken some years, and I go, okay, I, I see what, where she's coming from. I get what she's saying, you know. That takes, it takes years, right, Beth? It just takes years. Reverend Brian and Donna, you know. If you lack patience, though, you will lack relationship. So nobody ever talks to each other at exactly the right period of time. You know, like, you might have, like, five things on your plate. And somebody's got something that's not the highest priority. Well, there's, there's time and place. But you have to be able to allow people to just jump in and mess up your desk. 
Just throw more stuff on your desk. It is what it is, right? And it's important to be flexible. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. You, I'm just going to fly through them from the Tanakh. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. There is blunt talk like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise is healing. That's Proverbs 12, 18. Proverbs 29, 11. If you're taking notes, this is good stuff. This is good just for living, everyday living. 29, 11 from the International Standard Version. The fool vents all his feelings, but a wise person keeps them to himself. How many times do we just vent off to our spouses? Don't look at me with that sanctified tone of voice because every one of them is guilty. Everybody's done it. Act like it's all easy and it's all cool and you go home and blow your stack. Yep, everybody's done it. Proverbs 17, 27, a man of understanding is a, a calm and cool spirit. Where do you get a calm and cool spirit from? Jesus. Secret place. Yes. Sorry, didn't come from any one of us. In right. fact, if anybody ever complimented me on being a nice guy or something, if that's true, I hope it is, I got it from here because that's not true of me without the Bible, without the presence of God. I am not a nice guy, and nobody else is a nice person either. The heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Amen. Proverbs 15.1, this is a really good one. I actually heard Mike Huckabee quote this many years ago. I wish more government people actually read the Bible and quoted it, and actually did what it said. But a soft, gentle answer turns away wrath, and grievous, harsh words stir up anger. You ever seen that? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I've seen that on the job. You've seen it out. You've seen it on the TV, sports, you know, whatever. You know, just just more grievous words, just all of a sudden in fisticuffs. You know what I mean? So we don't need that. Psalm 91, verse 2 is kind of interesting in the Smith version. Uh, it actually translates noisome pestilence as a word of ruin and a sharp word that he delivers us from the noisome pestilence. How about getting delivered from the sharp word? Can us guys get delivered from our sharp tongues? Yeah. Can we just like be nice with our mouths and if we don't have something good to say, take a piece of duct tape, like the good stuff, the Gorilla brand, and, and rip off about a four-inch piece and just slap it on. Sorry for you guys that wear beards. It's going to hurt when you yank it off, but, you know. Once you let the cat out of the bag, the cat's out, you know. Oh, thank you for enlightening me on how you really feel about this situation, you know. But here's another thing that's really important, especially when you're getting in a position of leadership, like just being a husband or having kids. Did you know that one wrong word out of your mouth could potentially ruin somebody else? Because you don't know where they're at. You don't know where the last straw is on the camel's back. So, for example, you ever watch the movie It's a Wonderful Life? All right. That's your assignment this Christmas. You have to watch it. I don't have it on DVD, but I, we stream it. I've been streaming it every year, watching it every year since I was a little kid. I guess I'm a, I'm a big Jimmy Stewart fan because he was a World War II hero. He actually was a hero, you know, but that's, that's another story. But, you know, at the wrong place at the wrong time, the perfect storm could happen to anybody, right? In the movie, George Bailey was never actually suicidal. But when he experiences a tremendous, well, loss, we'll just say, spoiler alert, and then <laughs> having potentially even to go to jail, um, the guy with the big bucks, the older guy, Potter, said something like, you know, after he finds out what his life insurance policy is worth, you're worth more dead than alive. And guess what? It dropped the seed into Bailey, and then he was thinking maybe suicide is the way out here. And this happens. This is real life. And then God intervenes sometimes when people are praying, when, they, when, they, when nobody's praying like they should and interceding, when, then you have suicides, right? So very interesting. You don't want to be that person that said, you're worth more dead than alive, you know, and then the next thing you know, they're gone. So what if you were the person that said, you know, you're worth a lot to God, and he gave his life for you on the cross? You know, I remember a couple times when I was in my single days, people telling me, you know, the Lord's been dealing with me about this. You know, and it was just, oh, I got to give my life to God, you know. It was just that last straw on the back, you know. So you could be that one person standing there at the Walmart aisle and you go, I don't know if the Lord's telling me to tell you something here. Get ready. Just don't punch me, okay? You know what I mean? <laughs> but if you know the voice of God, then it's, it's okay. Amen. Amen. 
Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of God. Huh? Come on, correct me, people. You should be, you should be body slamming me. Like in that commercial when the guy comes up and slams the guy down on the ground. Yes, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen. James chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. I actually got it typed up in the Amplified Classic. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it can boast of great things. I heard a preacher say, and I was going to mess with you guys, but I don't think I'm old enough. I don't think I'm at that place. But at the beginning of the message, I was going to say, today, I'm going to reveal to you by the end of this message who the worst member in this church is. I'm going to tell you who the worst member is, Robert. And everyone's thinking the worst member. And then I would just get up and say, the tongue is a little member. It's the worst member in this church. It can be the best. But it can also be the worst. It can boast of great things. See how much wood or how great a forest a tiny spark can set ablaze. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is a world of wickedness set among our members, contaminating and depraving the whole body and setting on fire the wheel of birth, the cycle of man's nature, being itself ignited by hell, Gehenna. Okay. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea animal can be tamed and has been tamed by human genius nature. But the human tongue can be tamed by no man. It's a restless, undisciplined, irreconcilable evil full of deadly poison. Which sounds worse than a viper to me. A viper could cling on and hold and pump poison. And, you know, you you could deal with it. You could get some anti-venom for a a diamondback or something. But what we do to each other sometimes, you know, full of deadly poison. Especially when we we know each other and we've broken bread together. You know, and it's amazing. So what do I love about my wife on number three here? Jennifer is there to come by and help me up when I'm overwhelmed and need help. We usually pray together about stuff and just receive the answer by faith, right? Even when your mailman gives five pieces of your mail to your next door neighbor and one of them is your W-2. Thank God for neighbors you keep on their good sides, you know, and they don't open your mail for you. Lord, help our postal workers in Jesus' name. Number four, give your life for your wife. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. Okay, here we go. Let's, let's round the corner on this 400-meter dash. We're coming around the 200 mark. This is where we start to pace a little bit. Start to really kind of get our feel for it. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So I like reading that first before we go to the next because stupid guys always go, oh, you need to submit to me, woman. Yeah. How about a kick? How about a kick you know where? How about that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Submitting yourselves one to another, one to another in the fear of God. Right. In the fear of God, not the fear of man, the fear of God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. Yeah. As unto the Lord. You can't submit to yourself to a husband as unto the Lord if he acts like a devil, okay? So you're going to have to just, that's a different situation in there, but you've got to obey God. The husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So he doesn't want to leave anything out. He doesn't want to say, yeah, but you can do this on your own, and yeah, but you can, there's an order, there's a chain of command, you know? It's, it's amazing that even Jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back, but God knows. Yeah. Amen. So there's things that are sometimes withheld, you know. Or the fact that the Holy Ghost had to stay here with us. Seems like the raw deal, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and Jesus is with us, God is with us, but you know what I mean. Yes. It says here, husbands, love your wives. That doesn't mean love is in just the romance part. You know, we all know what that is, but... Agape, your wives. Agape is that kind of like that soldier that goes out there in a battlefield and fights for all of these people back in their country on foreign lands and people that don't even know them, people that throw rocks and spit at them, you know. And and you're just you're ready to give your life. You're ready to sacrifice at any moment if you had to. And it says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So it says you're supposed to give yourself for your wife like Jesus gave himself for us. Amen. That's what I see. And a marriage will never go very well if you don't do that. If the guys are kind of, they just are consumed with themselves. They just do their own thing when they want to do it. 
you're just not going to get very far. You're going to keep hitting the wall called do as thou wilt, do as thou wilt. You don't have to bow the knee to yourself anymore, you know. Love your wife as Christ loved the church, gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. This is how you can have a marriage that's without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. He wants us to constantly get better and better at doing this. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. If you don't love your wife, you don't love yourself. If we save our lives, we lose our lives, right? Amen? No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes it, cherishes it, cherishes it even as the Lord of the church. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Then it says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Again, one flesh. Amen? Amen. You can almost, you're playing a game or something, you can just finish each other's sentences, you know? You just know what that other person's thinking. Yeah. We've been getting that a lot lately. We were just driving down the road, and I'll just say something. He goes, I was just going to say that. And it was actually fairly off topic. So you can be in the spirit together, you know, even just minding your own business. So giving our lives for our wives, it's not about us, it's about her. As husbands, we're not to live to please ourselves, but to lay down our lives for others. And the first person to do that is for our wives, not even our kids yet, our wives. Not coworkers, not our congregation. Married men, love God, love your neighbor, and your number one neighbor is, guess who? Your wife. Amen. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So we can be the most talented, gifted, popular, wealthy people on earth, but if we're not a knight in shining armor to our wives and our kids, then our success is very hollow. They don't care. They just want to spend time with you. I've heard so many stories of very famous people that aren't necessarily devil worshipers, mm -hmm. but very, very famous. And I would always want to get in their head, like, how, what made them so great and famous? And they would constantly say things like, well, I missed a lot of birthdays. Yeah. Well, I missed my daughter growing up. Right. That's not a success. No. And then I turn around and I go, next, yeah. next. And I've had to do that many times. Yeah. So people that aren't famous... Okay, they didn't achieve the great fame usually, right? Yeah. So it's it's the people, it's your pastor, mm -hmm. it's your it's maybe your dad or your your brother your brother or somebody, you know. Yeah. There's always somebody out there, even if it seems like there's like where are my people, Lord? You know what I mean? They're here. Amen. Right. They're always there. Like that prophet that said something about, you know, not too many of us left and there was like four hundred or right. something that were reserved. Yep. So anyways. Moving right along, um, even for example, uh, Phil Kagey, they said, he's a great musician, right? Probably the greatest guitarist on planet Earth. And they say he's a better uh, man than he is a musician. Better husband and family person than he is a musician. That's a, that's a pretty good family guy. <laughs> and he does, it, he does one hand, he didn't even have a finger on one of, you know, it's like, wow, this guy's amazing, right? Wow. Um, so what do I love about my wife? Number four, she makes me great meals. What's that got to do with give your life for your wife? I don't know. Makes me great meals. Oh, this is it. She gives me the best egg. Hagen used to say that about his marriage. They would give each other the best egg, right? So she goes to the gym with me, and she lifts weights. Not because she's afraid that I'm going to find a date either. She just wanted to come because, you know, she wanted to do something fun. She likes to watch Navy SEAL shows with me and keeps a clean house, obedient kids, and a bunch of other stuff I overlooked. Amen? Number five. Confess the word and pray over your spouse, your mate, your lover. Lord, why don't they change? Why don't they change? And then the Lord's like, why don't you change? You know, because you are a pray, uh, you're, when, when you're not praying and you're just talking to God, you're actually just complaining. And you're not doing anything. You're making the problem worse. He hears everything, but he's like, you're talking to me, and I, that's not my language. That's not New Testament language, right? So you have what you say. So if you're seeing something over and over and over, certainly don't want to go talking to somebody else about it because now you've advertised someone's problem. It's like just taking a, rending a billboard and saying, you know, so-and-so's got this issue or whatever. You will have what you say, and you will have what you keep on saying. So let's just say, you know, your wife had an issue with something. Find some scriptures that cover that. I don't know, take Proverbs 31, for example and start speaking it over your wife. You don't even have to pray it necessarily. You just say it and claim it. My wife does me good, not evil all the days of her life. 
Just to say she was just mean to you all the time. Say that. Amen. Stop telling God. Well, <laughs> well, she could do the same thing, you know. So, if, you know, it's like Brother Cap said, don't, don't call for the cat when you want the dog. You know, it's like, it, what do you want? Call for what you want, you know what I mean? It is so easy just to get lost in the issue, right? So number five, what do I love about my wife? She's loyal to the death. She's the best friend I'll ever have, very big on family and get-togethers. And she'll let you know if you have it coming, which is really good. You always know you have a good friend when they let you have it. You have a, Anyone have a friend in your life that will let you have it? That doesn't mean they're browbeating you all the time. But when you are wrong, which every single person that's ever walked in these doors has been wrong, Christian or for 28 years and 28 minutes, it doesn't matter. Did anybody even call you out on it? You know, sometimes you'll get it from the pulpit. You'll get it from listening to something on TV. But you also need it from somebody in your life. If you've got yes friends all around you, they're not really your friends. Yeah. They, just, they just run off and say bad things about you when you're not there, you know. I, I've, I've been around people like that. You want to befriend them, and then the, they stab you in the back the next minute. It's like, okay, not going to be a loyal person to be spending time with, right? So... Number six is keeping your romance and your friendship going strong and watching out for evil soul ties. Say it with me. Evil soul ties. Let's uh, finish up in the next ten minutes here. Go to Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon. Close your ears, Sabella. Number six, keep your romance and friendship going strong and watch out for evil soul ties. I said evil because there's good soul ties like the ones we have in this room, right? So, or your soul tied to your Bible. I love my Bible. I'm like Mike Murdoch. I just want to rub it on my cheek sometimes. <laughs> I mean, this is French Morocco leather. <laughs> You're looking at me funny. I don't care. I kiss my Bible. I get so enraptured by my Bible, I kiss that thing sometimes. I think it was made in like 1965 at Cambridge. It's kind of an antique. So, Song of Solomon 516. Yes, I'm weird, but I'm weird for Jesus. This is my beloved. This is my friend. Your beloved needs to be your friend. If it's not, not your friend, I mean, how is that going to work, right? <laughs> Song of Solomon 6, verse 3 to 4. I am my beloved's. My beloved is mine. It goes on and says, you are beautiful, O oh my love. So, uh, for example, if your husband, best thing is to do is not compliment other women and then not compliment your, your wife, right? right? That's just a really <laughs> silly and dumb thing to do. But it happens. So if you think someone's beautiful, maybe say, you're looking beautiful today, huh? You know? And because when you see that, you, when, you, when you see your wife being beautiful to you, then let her know. Yeah. Or if you love your kids, you say, I love you, Sabella. Right. right? You say these things to each other because this is the right thing to do. Yeah. And if you withhold it and you just, you're just kind of like a crotchety guy and you don't say those things, We've all had dads that just completely missed it on that, right? Yeah. They don't really say that much at all. No. Oh, and then they're on their deathbeds. I didn't say it enough, but I, I love you, son. <laughs> Dad, come on, you know. Could have told me that many times. but So I remind myself of these things. Like, oh, yeah, my wife's beautiful. I should tell her that every so often, right? Hopefully I do that enough, right? <laughs> okay. Tell her to her face. Amen. Song is not yeah. Song of Solomon 7:10. Um, it says, "I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me." Do you know why some marriages fail? Their desire goes towards others other than their spouse, right? right? And then we'll finish here in Song of Solomon 8:6 to 7. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which has a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be condemned. So there's something stronger than death. I mean, there's the love of God, right? Amen. But also the love that a man and woman share is just like, it's amazing. You take two totally different genealogies and put them together. At least they should be different genealogies. <laughs> I hope you're not sharing the same, like, grandparents or something. <clears throat> I mean, back in the day, first cousins sometimes Stop. married, but you know what I mean. 
I, I, I heard a story about a married couple who've been married like 30 plus years and the family did a, a DNA test and they're like, hey, you guys are like second cousins or something. Did you know that? And they're like, no. <laughs> I remember one guy I worked with, I, he said he, he'd check with his grandma, you know, to make sure he wasn't related to a girl that he liked. You know, I thought that's pretty smart because it's a small community, you know. Everybody's a cousin at some degree up here, right? Unless they, you know, from out of the area. So you got to keep your, your sex life strong. Go on dates and outings with each other without the kids. If you can, you know, once they're not in baby stage anymore, go on dates every other week or something. Or even just go on like an outing, you know. Yeah. Just, just do something, get some coffee, whatever you like. Maybe coffee's evil to you, then get a soda. If that's evil, drink some water on the beach. Amen. Whatever it takes, whatever you guys like, you know. Yes. When the kids are grown, leave the house. You know, are you going to be better friends at that point than you were before? Right. You should be. Yeah. And let's see, what else I got here? Another thing for guys is don't open yourselves to other women with the wrong soulish connections mm -hmm. through communication and, and opening yourself up to other women. Don't confide in other women oh. or communicate with them without your wife's knowledge. Right. Big no-no, right. right? And it's not just like here in our church, we have a policy. We don't, we don't meet, you know male and female behind closed doors, right. you know, without our spouses. It's just the smart thing to do. Right. And it's a breeding ground, really, because it always starts with, oh, yeah. it's innocent. It's just innocent. I'm just talking. No, you're not. you got a flesh like everybody else, mm -hmm. and you got rebellion in you just like everybody else. So discipline, 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 amen? amen? That's what keeps us out of trouble. 1 Timothy 5, verse 22, treat older women like mothers. Younger women like sisters, guys. Yep. None of that elevator eyeballs stuff. Amen. With all purity. It says with all purity. Have you ever thought of kissing your mom in a romantic way? <laughs> Have you ever thought of kissing your sister in a romantic way? If you answer yes to that, come on up here and we will cast the devil out of you. You know what? Sometimes men who don't have the sexual life under control, right? They're perverted to some degree or another, right? And sometimes it gets so bad they become full-blown perverts. You see them all over the watchdog.org websites. Look on, your, look on the block that you live on, and probably there or nearby. And there's probably more because we don't know all of them. It's so easily accessible. You got porn addicts, and you got homosexuals, and then you got pedophiles. And you got a bunch of them that haven't even been located yet. And now you got artificial intelligence pornography. Another thing to not do. They can put your face on somebody, some AI-generated oh. nude body. How about that? Yep. Pretty nasty. Pretty nasty. First Timothy 5, cha chapter 5, verse 2 says, To keep yourself pure, who does that? You do. I mean, you can do that with the help of the Holy Ghost, cry out to him and stuff. But if you got to take this thing right. and stick it in a lockbox, I used to think that this would be a wonderful blessing. And in some ways it is to have your office in your pocket. But unless it's you're, you're controlling your notifications, oh. ding, 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 ding. And guess what? Most of those things are not truly urgent. You know, the things that people talk to Jesus about, a lot of times are urgent. Somebody died, can you help my daughter, you know? Yes. Or this person's about to die. Yeah. It wasn't 90% of what you see on notifications. No. That's like, holy smokes. Yes. What are we going to do when we get in a real emergency, right? right? So anyways, I'm not beating up on anybody or thinking about any of them in particular, but this is awesome. My favorite thing about it, Audio Bible. The Bible study app that I use on here, it's lightning fast. But I have another one of these that's not connected to the, you know, T-Mobile or whatever. And I use it just for that. Sometimes just because I just want to get away. You know, there was times years ago where we just got away and we, all we had was a landline. And it still worked. Everyone was still okay. We didn't all bleed and die out, you know. I mean, oh my gosh. You know, we were okay. We were more than okay in a lot of ways when we disappeared into the woods and nobody could get a hold of us, you know? And there was, there was, a, there was like a, 
the Spirit of God on it, too, because Jesus would do stuff like that, and he wasn't, you know, I don't know, maybe he told his mom where he was going, or maybe he just said nothing, like, I'm just going, you know? They didn't even know where he was that time. Don't you realize how we're pulling our hair out, Jesus? You know, and he's in there, he's like, don't you know I'm supposed to be about my father's business? Yep. And, you know, and then he just followed with him, right? And so, how, how do we contact each other and communicate with each other? Sometimes we can communicate just praying in the Spirit, yeah. being in the Spirit. And then the things that matter are coming up in our spirits yeah. when we're dealing with them. Number seven, oh, the last thing. Number six, sorry. What do I love about my wife other than Jesus? She's my best friend, loyal to me. I think I mentioned that already. When it comes to romance, I'm very thankful for that too, but that's nobody else's business. Amen. <laughs> Moving right along. Number seven. Keep each other fit and strong and watch what you put in your mouth. That's a big thing. If you don't watch that, you can die young. Do you like dying young? Does anyone want to die young? We were talking about it, joking about living to 100, but why not? You can do it. Somebody said, yeah, but, but I know a healthy nut guy that died in his 50s with a heart attack. I know a healthy nut guy that lived 100 years. I know somebody that died of COVID. I know a person that survived COVID. What are, we, what are we talking about here? I know a person that was standing on the word and he still died. Oh, come now. What I've heard is this. If you work the word, it'll work. But, you know, if you're not working it, you know, it may not. You might even run out of time. There's been people that died that didn't, you know, they just got into things. Or, may, you know, they just, they, they were just new to things. You know, there's a whole different bunch of reasons. But for you to say, oh, I know so-and-so, my uncle died, and he was, oh, really? Do you really know? Are you God? Do you know everything about what's going on here or why that soldier died or why that person died on that accident? I don't know everything, but the Word of God has a common thread through it called, you walk in the wisdom of God, you can be like Eddie Penny, SEAL Team 6 guy, who just goes, I don't know. I just heard a voice tell me to step behind the wall. And I got behind the wall, and the whole building exploded, you know. And his, some of his friends died and got mangled, you know. So I would say this. I'm not a judge of anything, but I'd say if we just listen to the Lord, we can we could sleep through our alarm on 9-11 morning, you know, and not be in the building. We'll just put it that way, without beating up on anyone or putting people down. or You know, I certainly wouldn't want to do that to somebody's parents who died, right, or something, right? So... I just say it that way. First Timothy four eight says bodily exercise profits you. It does say profits little, but it profits. Profits little compared to godliness, but it profits. I think uh, Apostle Paul was probably a guy that liked wrestling and boxing, right? Because he talked about it. First Corinthians chapter nine. I've got two more scriptures, and then you guys can go home. Skip that late night Taco Bell, though. You don't want that. Me and my buddy Jason Zinsky used to. Get Taco Bell like 11 o'clock at night. Goofy stuff we did in school. That's when they made tacos for like, a, it was like a dollar a taco, and they actually like filled it full of food. It was actually filled full of food. Everything shrank, and then the prices went up. It's like weird. So in verse 27, I keep under my body. I discipline my body, and I bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway or be disqualified. That doesn't mean you have to be a gym rat and be in there all the time. Just find something to do, like Rick Renner says, I get up in the morning and I do some push-ups. Is he, is he flexing his muscles and looking in the mirror, taking selfies? No, he's just said he does some push-ups. He's got to get his heart rate up. You know, if you need to go out and take like a walk or something, or just do something that works for you, go for a swim, something, get your heart rate up, amen? 2 Timothy chapter 2. I like to think of this when those times come and when you just... Wow, this is a rough workout today, Lord. I don't want to be here. Anyone have one of those? I do not want to be here right now. I'm having a toad right now. Everybody stay away from me. <laughs> you know? Chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that wars and tangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. I know that could go for a lot of things, but I think of it sometimes when, you know, you're having a, a tough time. So find exercises that work for both of you and keep at it. If you can, do it together. I know like uh, uh, Pastor Brent Cunnings and his wife, he'll, 
he was telling me today, he, he just puts his wife on his back and does squats. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're extreme, don't ask your wife to be the same, but if she's kind of extreme, then maybe join her. You know what I mean? Have some fun with it. And remember, health is not a body weight. It's not a waist size. It's personal fitness, okay? Personal fitness. That's different for everybody. You don't have to look like the stupid magazines. It's all a farce. It's all fake. It's all garbage. When you see those people get up in the morning, they don't have their masks on, yeah. and they don't have their photoshopped on. Yeah. They look like all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So don't look at that junk and compare yourself to it, especially yeah. girls, because you're going to want to do that yeah. by nature. Just don't do that. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't compare yourself to other people. Amen. You know, and also some bigger guys, they move like lightning, and some skinny guys, they're completely out of shape. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. That's got nothing to do with it, right? Regarding food, just read your labels. If, you, if, if all of your food is just, you can't read the label because it's like gibberish. Like, it's the stuff made, you know. Sure, you can, you can eat that and you can pray over it, but, but should you? Like, you could say, well, it's really expensive to eat healthy. Then maybe we could use our faith. Maybe we could say, Lord, I'm going to believe God for, for a bigger grocery budget so I could buy stuff that's better for me. So... Try to stay with food that doesn't bog your arteries down, constipate you, and give you aches and pains like in your joints and stuff. Eat food that gives you good energy. It's just like medicine, right? Not the sugar rushes and processed food. When I was drinking those energy drinks, NOS, NOS, I started getting like heart flutters and canker sores galore. Who likes a good canker sore? Anybody like those? Yeah. So real quickly, a good testimony for strength training. Uh... I used to have some issues with my left knee, just, I don't know, from when I was younger or whatever. And I always thought, like most people, if you keep using it, you're going to wear it down and it's going to hurt more. It was the opposite. Strength training creates more strength in your bones, your muscles, and ligaments. And this is not including steroids. Steroids are going to wreck you, so don't get into that either. But the point I'm trying to make is, like, there was a guy named Ryan Hendrickson. I think he was, he was a SEAL team guy. And... He actually had his leg blown off, and there was like a gap of bone missing because of the IED that took his leg off just about. And they just wanted to experiment, so they put it in like a bird cage and put metal throughout it to, to reset everything into the feet, into the leg. And he would throw up in the gym working out. They said, you have to use strength training to, to grow this material back. And he's like, we don't, there's a 15% chance that's going to work for you. And within a year, I think he was back on active duty, he grew back like two inches of bone, but by strength training. So you have to put it under resistance, and it'll even grow bones back. Amen. And that's just, that's without the anointing. That's yeah. just the way God made your body to reconstruct itself, but you have to put it under a stress load. Not too much. Don't be those people that, like, guy killed himself squatting because he just put too much on his back and broke his neck. Not talking about that either. There's always, there's always this too far this way, and then there's always too far that way. So, right? So, what do I love about my wife? Number seven. To end the message today, Jennifer gives it her best with each and every rep. She enjoys visiting Gainesville. And what I like about it, she's not staring at herself in the mirror taking selfies. <coughs> it's always annoying when you see a guy spending more time staring at himself in a mirror getting like, you know, just getting the job done or helping somebody else learn how to do something or helping a high school kid, like, you know, stop rounding their back every time they try to pick up too much on the deadlift because they got to impress each other. I can do it. Yeah. You're lifting way too much, dude. <laughs> You're going to hurt yourself doing that, you know. So, Lord, we just thank you tonight for a, a great time preaching, teaching your word. I ask you, Lord, to help us make, make us the husbands and the fathers that you created us to be, Lord. And if we're single... Make us the, the best of what we are to our kids, best mothers, you know, um, just the best family people we can possibly be. We're not putting down anybody being married or not. It's definitely a challenge to be married. So we respect that, Lord, but we ask that you help us this year in 2024 to get rid of vices and just garbage in our lives so that we can step up and be the leaders that we ought to be for our homes as men. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. If you've got tithes and offerings, you can raise your hand. We have Brother Jim walking around with the uh, tithes and offerings stuff. So 
Also, you can go on faithalivefellowship.org. You can give there with the give button. You can text to give. And uh, thanks for coming out tonight. We're really had a great time. And looking forward to Reverend Brian. Do not miss this Sunday. This Sunday, Reverend Brian is going to be ministering. Right. Do not miss it. Amen. Amen. You guys are going to have a blast. So.